What's up, Sam Ashers? I'm Dave Stutz, and here in the Sam Ash studio, I have Jonathan Pines to give us an expert look on how to mic up your acoustic and electric guitar. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here. Hey, it's great to be here. Now, Jonathan, I knew you were the right person to call. You have a rich pedigree when it comes to music producing and things like that. Can you give us a little bit of information well, on that? Well, I've been lucky enough to work uh, and make records with some great uh, guitar players ranging from Larry Coriel, Adrian Ballou, to the band Wilco. And in that, I've been able to work with a bunch of different styles and understand a bunch of different ways to work with acoustic instruments and capture the tone that we're looking for in the studio. That's awesome. So we're definitely getting an expert opinion on how to mic these instruments. One of the things I want to bring to the table for this is encouraging your listeners to actually listen to the acoustic guitar. One of the things that's so critical in this is listen to what you're actually doing. I have Make one some right adjustments here. to the acoustic guitar. For example, Dave's holding a beautiful Martin, which generally has a nice warm sound. So you may want to pair, it, pair that with a little bit brighter or more forward microphone, depending on the kind of music you're doing. Or you might choose a different guitar, you might choose a Taylor if you've got a really dense pop uh, production. This might be really ideal for a singer-songwriter, but the Taylor might cut through or project a little bit more in a really dense production, maybe something with a lot of electric guitars or a lot of keyboards. So those are critical things to do. The other thing is listen to the guitar. In other words, when the player's playing it, lean your head in. Chances are where it sounds good to your ear, that's a great starting place for a microphone. And note where the sound comes out. You're going to have more low frequencies from the hole here. You're going to have a different tone over here in the neck body joints. It's commonly called the 12th uh, fret. You're also going to get a little different sound back here uh, where the bridge is. So you can make a lot of adjustments just with that. And then we're also going to show you about using a ribbon microphone versus a condenser microphone. A condenser microphone is going to be brighter, more forward, more pop sounding. The ribbon microphone will be warmer. And again, you can use that as a contrast. And we'll also show you a tip for doing it in stereo and that you might put one microphone here and one microphone here um, to get a stereo sound. And you might reverse that depending on where you want your ribbon here or your ribbon here. Again, on a brighter, micro, uh, a brighter recording or a brighter guitar, you might want to put the ribbon microphone here and the condenser back here. Cardioid microphones are like flashlights. So where you point them is where that beam of energy is going to go. So think about that. You don't want to say mic down here per se unless you're looking for some sort of off-axis sound. You want to focus it towards the instrument. And the other thing you have to play with is how much room, how close to the instrument you are. You can back up a couple of feet. You have to make sure you have a good quiet microphone and a, a, a preamp or an interface with a lot of gain that can handle that. Um, so let's dive into some ways to mic the acoustic guitar. Okay, let's dive in. Right now we're trying to mic um, uh, close to the neck and body join, which is going to be a brighter, balanced place for the guitar, a little bit farther away from the sound hole, which has more low frequency energy. And then your only other variable here is if you lower the mic and you're miking the three strings on the bottom, you're of course going to get more of those, more of the brighter side of the guitar. Or if you come up a little bit, you're going to get more low frequency energy. We're starting kind of right in the middle. Let's hear how that sounds. One thing to note here is that Dave's finger picking, okay? That's a, a little bit subtle, a little bit warmer sound. If he was using a pick, it will be a little bit more aggressive sounding. Right off the bat, that's brighter and a little bit more forward. Now, another neat trick you can do is to mic the acoustic guitar from a different place. Let's try going back a little bit farther, a little closer to the bridge itself. Let's hear how the finger picking sounds in that position. Okay, Dave, now let's actually try a condenser in those same positions and hear how that sounds so we can give the listeners at home a little bit of contrast into the different kinds of tones we're going to get. Awesome, let's do it. Now we switch to the SE Electronics 2200 condenser microphone. This is going to be a little brighter and a little more forward than the ribbon. With the ribbon, we were using an active ribbon, and that's important because um, ribbon microphones, passive ones, don't have that much output. When you're recording something quiet, like an acoustic guitar or a mandolin or a banjo, you need something with enough gain. So the active microphone has 20 dB more gain, making it a lot easier with most of your home interfaces. Awesome. Okay, here we have the 2200. Uh, again, same position, uh, close to the neck body joint. Thank you. 
Now let's move the mic into the other position, back a little closer to the bridge. And again, these aren't hard and fast. You can try different things at home. You can move back a little bit farther. We're going to come down just a little bit here. There we go. Try and get about the same position. Okay. And again, this is straight into an interface, no EQ, no compression. This is all stuff you can do at home. We've gotten, I think you'll see, four different sounds by just moving, uh, using two different microphones and moving them to two different positions. Um, other fun things to try are back up a little bit, try and get a little bit more of the sound of the entire instrument, because again, most of the time when you're listening, you don't have your head right up on the acoustic guitar. You hear it in the room and you hear the sound of the room. So a fun thing to do is back up a couple of feet and see if it comes together a little bit more. But for pop recording and a lot of country recording, you want that more in-your-face, up-front focused sound. Awesome. Well, these have been some amazing tips. Should we switch over to electric guitar? Let's try some electric guitar toys. Awesome. All right. Okay, Dave, now we've actually switched to doing some electric guitar. And again, some of the same principles uh, apply here. In other words, you want to listen to your amplifier, you want to listen to the tone that's happening in the studio, and remember that most of the time we don't actually stick our ears, when we walk out in the studio to hear an amplifier, we don't stick our ears right down, right by the, the uh, amplifier itself. So it's worth trying to back the mic up a little bit, give the amp a little bit more breathing room. It may sound a little closer to the experience you have when you walk in the studio or on stage and what you're actually listening to. That's a great and tip. I think it's also really important um, to let the uh, uh, listeners know that you've got a lot of tonal control here, both on the guitar itself and on the amplifier. In other words, don't just reach for an equalizer, don't just reach for a plug-in. Try and get the tone as good as possible from the instrument itself. Show us, can you show us some examples of how you might change the tone with your guitar? So I'm a pretty simple guitar player. I play a Strat like this. Um, I like it in the four position and the five position the most. I roll off the volume a little bit because I feel like the, the volume pot, it gives you more room uh, for not only just volume, but I think even when you crank it, it, you know, it pushes the tone a little bit. So I'll roll it to eight and it usually sounds something like this. Now I can roll off the tone pot a little bit to make it a little more of a warm pad. I can switch to the neck position to change the tone. And then bring that tone back up. That's about it. So once the player has the tone that he or she really wants, let's look at what we can do on the amplifier. Play a little bit for us and let's see what the effects of the bass and treble controls are. You get a much brighter, much popular tone. Or again, a much warmer, more organic sound depending on what you want out of the instrument. Same thing for the bass, and tr uh, the bass control as well. Let's go back to the middle where we were. bass up all the way, that's down. Again, very, very simple way to change the tone. Everybody's got this capability at home. You don't need to get a lot of extra gear to do this. Make sure you work with what tools you actually have. Awesome. Um, one other thing I want to show is also mic position on the actual um, amplifier itself. Right now, we're right in the middle on the dust cap. Um, if you can't tell because of the grill cloth, just take a flashlight and point it in there and you can see where exactly you're at. And again, remember that microphones tend to behave a little bit like flashlights. Where you point them, that's the sound you're going to get. So right now we're on the uh, dust cap, but we're going to move it out. He's going to play the exact same thing. We're not going to change anything. And we'll move it out to the edge of the cone. The edge of the cone is typically a little bit fuller. The dust cap is typically a little bit brighter. So here we go in our reference position on the dust cap. I'm going to move this over here. So there you, there you again, just moving the microphone, an example of some different tone. And I'm going to do one other thing, which is back it up. We talked about the fact that we don't necessarily listen to guitars in a concert or a, or a, 
uh, live situation by sticking our head in the amplifiers. Yes, some of us did this as kids, but it's not normally what we do. So we're going to back it up a little bit, and you're going to hear a, maybe a little bit more complete sound of it, because especially with a combo amp, you've got an open back, so you've got sound coming off the back. And when you hear that in the room, you're not hearing that by just miking the front. When you back up a little bit, you're allowing that wave to come forward on it. So let's hear how that sounds. Great. So these have been awesome tips on how to mic this. Now, you know, different people have different microphones. What would be kind of a typical situation for you know, uh, someone at home, what kind of mics might they okay. have if they don't have a ribbon? Everybody's going to have probably a dynamic mic at home. That's a great place to start. That's also the sound of a lot of recordings. And that's going to have a little bit brighter, more forward sound than the, the nice warm ribbon we're using. And another great way is to mix the two together. If you have two inputs, most of, most of you guys have a stereo interface or stereo input available to you. Um, and you might take your dynamic microphone, place it again maybe on the dust cap, maybe move that ribbon out uh, to the edge, and you'll get a tone that really gives you a lot of choices. And you can mix between the two very easily. And again, it's another way of achieving an equalizer or a tonal control. You can have a little bit more of the brighter position or a little bit more of the fuller position. The ribbon naturally is going to have a little bit bigger, warmer sound, and the dynamic is going to be a little bit more forward and voiced a little bit more uh, in the upper mid-range. Awesome. And how much do the variables change if I'm more of an aggressive player, if I have humbuckers, distortion, a lot of effects, a bigger amp, how is that going to change? Well, uh, some, of th some things are definitely going to change. The techniques of where you're going to find it brighter and darker aren't really going to change. You're going to want to make sure you have something that can take level. One of the cool things about this SE VR1 ribbon is it'll take 135 dB SPL. So wow. it's not going to break up if you have a really big rig cranked all the way out. Nice. Um, and uh, some condensers and some ribbons are going to have problems with that much level because you can easily have over 120 dB, especially when you're close like that. Um, but things to keep in mind are, again, um, you know, if you switch to a, a, a humbucker, you're going to have a little bit fuller, thicker sound than perhaps a Strat or Tele style guitar. Um, if you switch to um, something with a lot of overdrive, like a Marshall and Orange, something in that realm, where you crank this up or you use a pedal board with some things, you're going to have a lot more distortion. It's a lot more low frequency energy, but it's also a lot more uh, mid-range aggression. And so sometimes you may want to go with the warmer microphone in that situation. Or again, what kind of music are you recording? If it's dense music, heavy metal, hard rock, you're going to have a lot of guitars. You're going to want something brighter to peak forward. If mm. it's something that's more like a three-piece blues or jazz type thing, again, the warmer sound of a ribbon may work better for that music. Sure. Uh, in all these cases, there aren't hard, fast rules. Mm -hmm. um, the main goal is to get out there, try some tools, try some different ways of approaching, and make good records. Yeah, try them out. Now, how do you feel about the school of thought where some people say to put a mic in the back of the cabinet? Um, that's, to me, that's interesting. Um, it's very specific to an open back. Uh, first off, it's right. really only going to happen on an open back or combo style Makes sense. amp. Um, remember on that one, you want to play with the phase. You may want to invert the phase of the, of the uh, second microphone. And that's another good tip when you're doing two microphones on anything, you want to make sure that you try inverting the phase so that they're in phase. In phase is going to show up most of the time as more low frequencies. Listen to it in mono, and whatever position has more low end, that's probably the in-phase position. Um, you know, again, for the harder or heavier things, I might back off the microphone a little bit. Again, if you're using a 412, sometimes about 18 inches back is where a 412 really starts to come together, and you hear all four speakers working together. And to your point about whether you want to mic the front or back of something, um, that can be very cool. The other thing would be something close and another mic farther back. Because again, as we talked about, when you walk in, we first walk out in the studio or walk up to a, an amp, you're hearing it from probably three or six feet away. You're hearing it very differently than that really close up focus. So if you mix the two, you have one mic that's farther back and one mic that's close up, you've got all the variables handled right there. And you can pan one to one side and one to the other and get some really cool positioning effects. That's awesome. Well, Jonathan, if you're teaching me anything today, not only can I be creative with my guitar, my amp, my effects, but also in the studio, in your producing, you can be creative with mic choices as well. Mic placement, mic choices, things like that. Really, and there is no one way to do this. It's about experimentation, using the tools you have, and maybe seeking out some good, interesting new tools that would be available at a place like Sam Ash. Awesome. Well, once again, I'm Dave Stutz. This is Jonathan Pines. Thank you so much for being here to give us a nice introductory lesson in how to mic your guitars. Hope you got something out of it, and we'll see you next time right here on the Sam Ash Spotlight.